if I start rambling too much, no. uh, just just cut me <laughs> off. This is no, this is wonderful. A very random segment with Ruffy and Clean. A very random segment. Hola, you amazing artist. This video is actually going to be a Zoom conference call that we did with uh, Lisa Puzon of the Dixon School of Arts and Sciences. And uh, we had the opportunity to be interviewed by Quavian. He is one of her students who won a contest. He won an award for a documentary that he did. He wanted to ask us about art, and it was artists during the pandemic. There were certain things and highlights that we talked about that uh, I asked permission to see whether or not I could share it with you guys, and they said yes. The interview actually lasted uh, over an hour, uh, so like you're not getting a full hour, but you, it is pretty long, so be prepared to like listen to this in the studio while you're creating. Um, you don't have to sit there and watch our blurry, uh, weird Zoom faces. You could just go create something while you listen to this. So enjoy the interview. The art comes together because you're thinking about technique, you're thinking about materials, you're thinking about subject matter. Everything that ends up on the canvas is emotional in nature and you're creating it for whatever reason it is that you're creating it, whether you're creating it because out of a sense of insecurity, out of a sense of anger, or whatever emotion is there that's causing it to, to get created. Even if you decide that you're going to do a series of flowers that you just saw in the yard or a red cardinal, like there is some kind of significance behind why it is that you're creating that. And for me, because I personally set out to create something that is going to make me feel empowered, that's, that's the emotion that I put behind the pieces. So when I look at my art, I see something powerful. Uh, it doesn't mean that that's what everybody's going to see. <laughs> people, people see things through their own filters. So they, they see whatever it is that they see. That it's, it's not my job to convince somebody else of what it is that, that they see. But me personally, I see something powerful. When you're hanging art in your house or you have a sculpture or whatever, but when you're hanging a painting in particular, it's almost like you're, you're installing a window into a world that is something emotional for you. So you could either have a window with a, a landscape on it of mountains. You could have a window of scene that reminds you of something, or you could have a window of almost like a self-reflection. Even if the person in the painting, the figurative doesn't look like you, it is a self-reflection of you, something that just reminds you of uh, how powerful you are. And so that's, that's why I think of the empowerment series and almost everything I create has some kind of sense of empowerment to it. So it's mm -hmm. like, um, I could easily get stuck in everything I create could easily fall into this series. So the defining factor with them has to be something that ties the series together. Inspired, this was created during the pandemic and this is inspired by what's going on. It's, it's the ability to stand in front of the mirror and remind yourself that you are awesome, you know, mm -hmm. that, that no matter what insecurities are creeping in your head, that you're the one that brings the light. Someone that you live with or somebody that you know mm -hmm. is trying to bring that negativity into your life, you're the one that gets to like, you know, spark up around. Like I said, I was, I've been inspired by comic books my entire life. I'm like, <laughs> I also love that idea of like, just power. Uh, I had one person tell me that I should put the Pensacola beach ball in all my art, you know, and, and me, and me being a very insecure uh, artist getting started. Um, so insecure. In fact, that, you know, when I left high school, I was like, I'm going to be an artist, dad. I don't care what you say. And then 12 year, years later, I was working in corporate. I was, I, I had been, I had picked up a paintbrush in 12 years, maybe about five or six times. And um, the only time that I would pick it up was when I was sad or overwhelmed by my corporate life. And so going into deciding to actually being inspired by Clee, my wife, she was like, you should, you should show these to the world. Um, I decided that I was going to do it, but I was going to do it safe, you know, like have a plan. I'm going to create stuff that people like. Well, here's the thing there's a lot of different people out there and they all like different things. So like if you are trying to create art for someone else and not create art for yourself, you're going to drive yourself crazy. A, because you don't know what people want. Most of the time they don't even know what they want. And B, because then you're not creating stuff that is genuine to you. And so 
there's it took about two weeks of me creating other stuff to realize i was like this sucks it's like i don't i don't why am i why am i doing this uh, trying to pursue an art career if i'm stuff that i don't even feel any passion for and what was happening was that people would walk up and ask me about the art and i had nothing to tell them no response because there was no emotion behind it so there was one day that i was out and i was doing a, a just painting and i had my stuff and I decided that I was just going to create my, this, this series. This was something that I would sketch when I was a kid and it's called, uh, but it wasn't called this. It's called the me and it series. Klee is the one that, that came up with the name, but it's these grotesque uh, monstrous forms that have just round undefined eyes and are always doing something very sweet so the idea behind a series is that you cannot judge a book by its cover no matter what something looks like no matter uh what feeling you get when you first glance at it that there is always something deeper and sweeter underneath i was like i'm just gonna paint this and the next thing you know before i was done with the piece it was the first work of art that i sold was my me and Ed series and not those paintings of beach scenes or anything like that, that I've been working so hard on. And so this series is very, very close to my heart because it, it was the first indication, the first time that I proved to myself that if I created what I wanted to see, that chances were that my kind of people, my collectors were going to find me. And that was a very powerful lesson for a very insecure artist back then. Because I've actually had time to be in the studio and thinking about uh, what direction I want to head in with uh, with a lot of the art. Yeah, thinking once again about where you want to go with yeah. the art and yeah. not just being swept along with the current of commerce. <laughs> yeah, because it's easy. It's easy. A lot of people think that once once you get going in your art career and you start getting a, a, a little bit of a reputation under your belt that then it's easy peasy but that's that's when it's really easy to lose sight of what direction you wanted to head in in the first place it has a lot to do with who you are being authentic to yourself and just moving forward with what it is that you want out of life and and showing that and sharing that with people i'm rambling again how do you feel after the art pieces was doing how do I feel uh, after the art pieces were done? Um, usually do this wow thing where I'm like, wow, I created that. That's awesome. And, or um, then I just move on to the next piece. It's, it's an interesting thing because you have this absolute love for what you created and you want to get it out there. And then you have the nerves that come with that of like, how are people going to respond to this? But then... Uh, for me, I'm at a point where I'm ready to move on to the next project, to, to, to the next expression. It's like, it's like writing a beautiful poem and you get to read it out into the world. And then that's it. It's out there. Now it's time for the next thing. So mm -hmm. that's, that's usually how I feel after I create a piece. Um, you know, I, and for, for a lot of pieces too, there is little things, you know, like, one one thing that I try to, uh, I used to have to battle with perfection, right? Because everybody has an idea of what it means for your art to be perfect. And, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that the consensus, nobody could agree. So whatever is going on in your own head, when it comes to the perfection of your art, that is your own internal journey. That is a, your own thing. So with a lot of pieces, I'll create it and there will be small things that I think to myself, you know what, I love that combination of colors. I love the way that the lines came out here. This part, maybe next time I could do that better. And so it's always like an evolution and a growth stage. Am I always 100% satisfied with the art that I create? Yes, but also no. You know, you know what I mean? Like the piece is out there because I love the piece and I wanna share it with the world. Could I improve on stuff? Of course, there's always room for improvement. So it's, it's this weird relationship that, that you have. You know how a lot of people say that like your artwork is like your children? Um, it, it's kind of like that. Like you have this absolute love, unconditional love for the piece, but you also sometimes have this little bit of like judgment and protection at the same time going back and forth. Mm -hmm. So 
Did that answer your question or did I go off in a totally yeah. different direction? Quavia? Um, it answered my question. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> when you create your artwork, it's the perfect expression for that moment. It's like, yep. You know what I mean? It's like, and that's what artists have done throughout the ages is Ex they exactly. record what's happening around them as artists. And I think with artists, artists has the ability to look at the bigger picture. You know, that's why we, we have, we create art that makes statements that, you know, because that's what we do. That's the power that we, we do as artists. And I yeah. think the perfect when you create that, it sounds like the process is really important to you more than yeah. like all the, all the stuff afterwards. I get intrigued sometimes, you know, afterwards when people uh, reflect on what they, you know, get from it or, or they project their own stuff at, you know, on that, it. That's what I, that's what I, I, somebody asked me a question um, uh, online. They were like, so if I'm not creating anything, so if I'm just creating flowers and it doesn't have this deep geopolitical meaning or whatever like that, then does it mean that it's not important art? And, but my answer, my answer to that question was like, everything that you create has meaning. Unless you are creating something that you think other people want to see mm -hmm. and you're being completely authentic in your creation, then everything that you create has meaning and everything has a reflect. Because I asked her, I was like, so why is it that you decided at this time to paint flowers and not roadkill? Why is it that you decided to paint the flowers and not, uh, not a figurative painting or not a landscape? what is it that drew you to those flowers? And a lot of times as artists, we have this fuzzy understanding while we're creating the piece of where it's going. It's almost like, it's almost like it's out of your hands and you're just this tool that is creating this piece. And then it's afterwards, afterwards that reflection when you're looking at the art and you're really, really interrogating your art to see where did you come from? Why did I create you? Why, why was I willing to spend sitting in front of a piece of canvas or whatever it is that I'm doing? Why was I willing to spend hours just completely and utterly focused on this detail and that detail and this color, you know, whether or not I'm using these colors and how color scale, like you're, you're, why did I decide to put this mark and not put that mark? All of that, it is a very, very intimate thing. So I believe that in every work of art, there's always a piece of the artist and their response to the times. So every work of art is, a, a, is almost like a documentation of a human being's perception and evolution throughout their entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... Your focus is on the world. Maybe there's an injustice and you want to speak about it. You want, because art is a language. It is a communication. None of those things in the climate of the world, the way that the world works, do those things matter. But those things, the moment that you tell somebody who says, oh, art doesn't matter, or I don't even listen to music or whatever, you tell them, picture a world where there is no architecture. There is no art. There's no uh, movies. There are, there's no music. There is nothing out there that the artist communicating who they are at this moment in time in their life. Everything would be gray. All the cars would look exactly the same. We'd all be living in the same houses. It, it, it just, it staggers my mind sometimes when people do not see how powerful it is to communicate with the world through your art. That was one of the things that we had to go through. That's, that's why I say like you're left different from your experience because here we are dealing with a pandemic and like, what do we, we're artists. We're not essential. Right. Yeah, There was a sense <laughs> of kind of a guilt, like for a while dealing with the guilt of wanting to still create art and share art during this time. And then coming around to realize that's very important for us to do right now. Remind yourself that what I do in the world is essential. It is important. 
and, and and people people don't have to agree with you and they don't have to but as long as you understand for yourself that what i do matters in a very very deep emotional economical sociological historical, historical fundamental fundamental <laughs> in every single way shape or form what we do matters our virtue of the month is resilience but can you say something about that and the role of artists or how artists can have resilience when i look at my career as a whole as an artist um the biggest roadblock that i've run into is the garbage that happens in my mind whatever is going on out in the world your mind is what feeds that to you and so for me resilience is the ability like a lot of people will think that resilience means that you put a wall up thick skin or you, as or they you say. build a thick skin in fact a lot of a lot of people will tell artists you know you just got to build a thick skin because you're going to get a lot of rejection you're going to get a lot of people that are going to make snide comments about your arts or criticism and in my mind I think that that is not a good idea because us as artists, we are connected with the world. We are connected with the negative emotions. We're connected with the positive emotions. Everything that we do as storytellers has to do with those emotions. The moment that you start building a wall, um, to me, that's not resilience. And I think it's the ability in real time to check in with yourself and to make sure that the things you're saying to yourself as being an artist or being a creative in real time, checking in with yourself, understanding you're going to come up against bull garbage, as I call it. So this is one of my abstracts. And this is based on the colors of the, so I don't do beach scenes, but I do these abstracts based on my experience at, at the beach, right? And so there's a lot of drip texture and, and, and the colors, that's the emotions that the colors evoke are what's most important to me along with the texture. My dad will walk in here and say, you're still doing those weird paintings about nothing, right? And so like, because he doesn't, he doesn't get it. He doesn't see that. It's not his cup of tea. <laughs> now, when I first showed my art, um, I was at the, uh, I got into, because a friend submitted my pieces to the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago. And so I got to do a show in one of their work. Now, this was absolutely terrifying. A, because I did not show my art anywhere. So we go, we do this high-end art show. All the people from the River North uh, Gallery District in Chicago and a lot of these like big name art critics and stuff were going to be there. And uh, there I am standing awkwardly next to my art and my dad, because my dad loves me and he's supportive, even though he doesn't understand what I do, um, comes and he starts slapping. I had three abstracts. He starts slapping one of my paintings and says, this one kind of looks like throw up really loud. And so like, I almost like just shrunk down and, of course, it doesn't end there. He's like, this one kind of looks like throw up. And then he paints at one of the, the this beautiful, beautiful figurative paintings that were next to mine. And one of them was a nude. He points at the nude. He's like, now that's art. <laughs> and so like, that's his perspective. He's just an old Cuban guy that just is loud and does that. That's art and uh, nude women and horses. That's, that's what art is for my dad. Um, so like... Well, back then, it destroyed me. And that's what I mean when I talk about resilience. Had I had the ability to look at that and change my perspective and just turn that into, this is just an experience. Like, this is just something that I'm going to be able to tell this story in a few years. And it's going to be amazing to, to, to give this example. Um, instead, I thought it was reflection on me. I thought that everyone around me was laughing at me. I just went complete. I closed off. And so the, that's one of the reasons that I went into corporate for so long and put the paintbrush down was, wasn't because I didn't love creating because I still had my art studio. I still kind of dabbled here and there because I couldn't stay away from it. 
but it was because I just didn't think that I was good enough because I bought into all the crap that was going on in my head. Um, years later, when, when I left the corporate world and we embarked on our travels, I started to really understand that if you quit, if you give up, that's the only way that you'll fail ever. That is the only way that you can fail. And I think that that's, that's, that really gets symbolized because that is at the core message of everything that I have to say. There is a, there is a person out there who uh, sold a, a pet rock. Like people are so afraid that their ideas are dumb or that what they, the, what they want to create is dumb or they're not sure because they're buying into what someone else is saying, thinking that other people are the authority when it comes to their art or the way that they live their lives. And the fact of the matter is that as an artist, resilience, that is key because resilience means that your family thinks that what you're doing is a waste of time, that the people that are around you don't even identify you as an artist. They don't even know what that means. Um, everybody has this weird idea that if you become an artist, that you're going to be starving for the rest of your life. Um, there are all kinds of myths and ideas of what to do. The entirety of the career is based on being afraid of gatekeepers and people telling you where and when you can show your art and whether or not you can't show your art. In my mind, there is, you have the art world, which accounts for the art that's being sold out there, that's being shown by people. You have all these amazing artists here in Pensacola and in all these different places, right? And you have these great galleries that are showing a lot of the local art. And then you have what accounts for 0.001% of the art world that gets all the media attention. And as artists, we get out into the world and we think that that is the art world. And that if we're not a part of that art world, that we're, we're not, that we failed, that we we're not succeeding. And that art world is, is not even the majority of the art that's being sold out there. It doesn't even account for hardly any of the art that's being sold out there. Um, but that's, that's what gets the news and that's what gets the media. So you get this weird idea of what it means to be an artist and you've got the, the cards stacked against you if you buy into what people are saying around you or what's going on. And so being resilient, I think, is blazing your own trail creating your own path and doing your own thing and understanding that whatever it is that you decide to do for yourself, for your life, with your art, that is completely up to you. And no one has the right to tell you yay or nay. It is your journey. And I think it, it just does. makes you a stronger person in general, really. You know, you have to yeah. be tougher, especially if you're an artist, I think, because there's, it's, so subjective in, in a lot of ways, you know, people will have their opinions and some people will just really connect with it. And, you know, for me, it's like, I, I really enjoy making those connections regardless of yeah. how different it is that they're responding to versus what I intended yeah. to make. I think it's actually fantastic to have yeah, that I many see. kind of, uh, you it know, is, response so to your work. It is so fascinating, so fascinating. I've had pieces of work where people have walked in and looked at it and just like, you know, backed off. Recoiled. And recoiled in <laughs> horror at it. I've had people that have walked in and looked at the same piece and just kind of like got nothing, just ignored it completely. And then I've had people that have walked in and looked at the piece and just tears mm -hmm. started streaming down their face. Everybody's experience in the world is completely their own so everything from color what colors do you associate to love what colors do you associate to happiness a uh, texture what textures do you feel like all of it all of it is so subjective to that person's experiences mm -hmm. and so when somebody's looking at your art and whether they're criticizing it or praising it um their opinion is more a reflection about them than it is about you. And that is beautiful about art. Mm -hmm. That is one of the things that I absolutely love. I love when people come in and they have the totally different reactions to mm -hmm. 
to to things and and you you almost as an artist it's almost like you get this insight into the human condition and start to really make a connection the more art you make and seeing people's responses you really start to realize like oh this this person's a little bit uh like this <laughs> or this person's <laughs> a little bit like that not that I like labels, but I think as an artist, I'm, it's one of the reasons that artists are always seen as eccentric or crazy. We do sit around a lot of time with our thoughts, creating things, really getting an insight into human behavior and the way that the world works. To continue to do that, because I think you guys have a great thing to share, and I think it would be helpful Absolutely. for my artists. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Thank you, thank you for having us. Thank you. And thank you, Quavion. Thank you, Quavion. Bye, you guys. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. It was fun for me listening back and uh, editing this and putting it together. Uh, man, what a freaking awesome. Lisa is absolutely awesome. She is uh, d- one of the coolest people that I know. She's a gallery director. She's she's also a teacher who really, really cares about her students and creativity and art and all that stuff. So it was a huge honor for us to get interviewed uh, by Quavian and by Lisa. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I adore you. Adios.